What is the Bible? What is it worth? Basic instructions before leaving earth. Life is full of struggles and it is hard. But we are made in the image of God. Lord, I have to praise you to the moon and back. I don't see anything wrong with that. It's me you help. It's me you kill. It's me you move. It's me you groove. It's me you touch. I love you so much. Oh, my Lord, I have to say thank you. Open your eyes. What do you see? Have you inventoried your life lately? Oh yeah, I have something else to say. Welcome to HBS and DWJ. Oh lordy lordy, to God goes the glory. God goes the glory, the glory, glory. All right, welcome to HBS and DWJ Podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host. Our mission, to provide the knowledge that will train sisters and brothers in Christ to spread God's love and create disciples. Our vision, to share all resources that will aid in the knowledge necessary for the building of God's kingdom. The adversary does not know what to do with those who possess integrity, We are not human beings on a spiritual journey. On the contrary, we are spiritual beings on a human journey. With that being said, we will open this Holy Bible study session up with prayer. So please join in. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, it is once again that we come unto you as humble as we know how, realizing that we should live what your word tells us, not Be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let our request be known to you. Remind us that whatever we ask that aligns with your will, in prayer, we should believe that we have received it, and it will be ours. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, welcome again to HBS and DWJ Podcast. I am Jerry Joyce, your host, and our scripture of the week is Romans chapter 8, verse 26, King James Version. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. This passage describes the difference between our future and our present as Christians. Our future in Christ as God's children and heirs of his kingdom is everything we long for. Our present, though, is a life of longing, patient waiting, living in hope of reality that has not yet arrived. We continue to suffer along with the rest of creation, to groan for the life to come. How do we live in the meantime, hmm? A large part of that answer, or a large part of the answer to that question, rather, has to do with the Holy Spirit given to every Christian when we come to faith in Christ. God gives us his own spirit as a deposit or down payment on that future we are longing for. And we can find this information in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 as well as 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 22. Through the spirit, God provides for us in many different ways on this side of eternity. Generally, he helps us in our weakness. Paul is acknowledging here that even as Christians, we remain weak in and of ourselves. Physically, we remain creatures in fragile bodies with sometimes baffling emotions. Spiritually, we can become weak in our faith and or in our resistance to sinful desires. As Paul will begin to make clear, however, God's Spirit with us makes all the difference. He continually helps us in and even through our own weakness. He steps in. He helps with the burden. More specifically, 
Paul writes that we are so weak that at times we do not know what to pray for. We have been given access in prayer to our Father God. We feel the need, the longing for Him, but what do we ask for? The Spirit steps in and carries those unsaid groanings, those thoughts and feelings we simply cannot express in human words to God. He both creates the connection from ourselves to God and provides the content of our communication. All right, our topic today is God Appears to Abraham Reaffirmed Promise Discussion. All right, God instructs Abram to walk the width and length of the land, apparently as a way of taking possession of it. Abram settles south of Bethel near the town of Hebron. Specifically, he sets his tents near the great trees of an Amorite man called Mamre. All right, um, Abram builds an altar to the Lord in his new home and continues to worship God there. In the prior passage, Abram and Lot have separated in order to avoid conflict between their growing families as found in Genesis chapter 13 verses 1 through 9. Lot chose to live in the rich but spiritually depraved region near Sodom while Abram settled further out into the land of Canaan according to Genesis chapter 13 verses 10 through 13. All right, now, um, Lot's decision will not only involve him in war, as we can find in Genesis chapter 14, verses 1 through 16. It will also eventually uh, lead to his complete ruin in Genesis chapter 19. All right, now, the wording of this passage is interesting, for it's parallel to Lot's decision. There, Lot is said to... uh, have lifted his eyes by his own will, according to Genesis chapter 13, verse 10. Here, however, Abram only lifts his eyes to view land at the command of God. After Lot moved himself, uh, moved after Lot moved himself and all his possessions away from Abram, the Lord Yahweh visits Abram once more. All right, now this echoes verse 10, where Lot lifted his eyes to survey and then claim land along the Jordan River. Lot did so at Abram's invitation. Now God instructs Abram to lift his own eyes to look in every direction, north, south, east, and west. In the following verse, God will again promise to give to Abram and all his descendants, the land, all of the land that Abram can, Abram can see. So as far north, south, east, and west as he can see, God has promised to give Abram and his descendants all of that land. All right, now God will give to Abram and his descendants all the land he can see, I mean, they, that he can see, and it will be theirs forever. Forever, ever, forever, ever. In fact, this adds to the promise God had given to Abram earlier, both in the scope of the land and in the eternal possession of it. Earlier verses described Lot lifting his eyes by his own will, as I stated before, to look in at the region of Sodom. Now, this might be a spiritual parallel to Eve's assessment of the fruit in Eden in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. All right, but here, however, Abram has only lifted his eyes at the request of God. This, if nothing else, demonstrates Abram's growing trust and submission to God. All right, God continues to reaffirm his promises to Abram and to expand on them. Not only will the Lord give Abram children and make of his offspring a great nation, God will make them so numerous as to be uncountable. Such a promise must have been both comforting and confusing to a childless man in his 70s. Using a potent analogy, God describes the number of Abram's descendants as like the dust of the earth. 
This echoes the concept of man being formed of the dust of the earth when God originally created Adam in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Here, however, the point is about how numerous these descendants will be. Interestingly, the comparison does not involve something like sand, which typically is counted by grains, as we can find in Isaiah chapter 48 verse 19. Here, even the idea of how to count dust is mind-boggling from both a physical and spiritual perspective. Abraham's children will number beyond the ability of the human mind to comprehend. And this information can be found in Romans chapter 9 verses 7 through 9 as well as Galatians chapter 3 verse 7. Now God instructs Abram to walk throughout both the length and the breadth of the land. Apparently, this was so that Abram could take possession of the land God had given to him, even if his descendants would not fully occupy or possess the land for many years to come. Now, this process would have been the equivalent of measuring the land in ancient times, taking a measure of uh, something was a sign of ownership. All right, now, Abram then moves south of Bethel near the town of Hebron. He settles there by the oaks or great trees belonging to Mamre, an Amorite man who will be revealed as an ally of Abram in chapter 14. All right, Abram built an altar to the Lord, Yahweh, in this place. He would continue his worship of God there. This area will become important to Israel as Abram and other patriarchs, Isaac and Jacob, will all be buried east of Mamre in the caves of Machpelah. And we can find this information in Genesis chapter 23, verses 17 through 19. All right, let's move on to our next uh, section. Do you have the complexion for the protection? It is now time for our life reflection. All right. um, A beautiful summary of the hope brought by faith in God. Change lives. Victory in hard circumstances. Overcoming sin. Even eternal salvation are all possible through a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now we can find this information in John chapter 3:16 as well as 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 through 11, Philippians chapter 4 verses 12 through 13, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9. Now God's omnipotence is real. According to Revelation chapter 11 verse 17, anything which can be done is within his ability. According to Numbers chapter 11 verse 23, no force or being can override his strength. According to Job chapter 42 verse 2, his power alone created everything which is or will ever be. According to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 as well as Revelation chapter 21 verse 5. God cannot contradict his own perfect nature. Not because it would be too difficult, but because the concept is meaningless. Like a square circle or a married bachelor, an imperfect God does not even reach the level of impossible because the idea itself is total nonsense. That nothing is impossible for God is true. All things which power can accomplish can be accomplished by God. All right, other than violating his own goodness, existence, and uniqueness, that includes every actual thing we could ever imagine. Mm. Check this out, out, out. All right. If you happen to find yourself wanting to support a minority business, try 
Emma Coley. Enhancing one's natural beauty is something that the team at Emma Coley has in the bag. All products are designed to highlight and not cover up. The Skin Tint is a sheer liquid cream available in six melanin-rich shades and the lip treatment oil is truly flattering for all shades. We are clean beauty made to reveal your inner excellence, the kind of excellence that rich, deep, and endless. The kind that can't be boxed in, beauty created for us, by us because before there was nothing out there that really saw us with years of industry experience behind us we knew that there was something missing for melanin rich skin so we put pen to paper made mood boards and assembled a team we create skin caring and deep understanding formulas we strive to surpass the superficial to bring profoundness to uh, how we create and connect through a community that elevates your depth and your state of mind. You are more than any mirror can contain, a joy of self that can't be restrained. You can find this business online at amico.com, amicolay.com, A M I. C-O-L-E dot com. That's A-M-I-C-O-L-E dot C-O-M. Again, that is Amicole dot com. Hey, bro. What time is it, man? It's now time to answer comments from HBS and DWHA website. All right, we'll start off with Jeffrey. Jeffrey says, In the same way God's promises to us are not just about material blessings, they are about spiritual blessings, such as the forgiveness of sins, the gift of eternal life, and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I believe that this passage is a powerful reminder of how God's faithfulness to his a reminder of God's faithfulness to his promises. It is a reminder that God is with us, no matter what our circumstances are. And it is a reminder that God's promises are not just for our physical well-being, but also for our spiritual well-being. All right, hello, Jeffrey. Welcome again to the HBS and DWJ website that turns into podcast episodes. Thank you for reiterating what God appears to Abraham reaffirmed promise is all about. Looking forward to hearing more from you in other episodes and blessings, my friend. All right, let's move on to Michelle. Michelle says, thank you for composing this interesting and easy to read article replete with scripture and inspiring images. We were often taught this classic Bible story at school. I wonder if Abraham really walked and talked with God as the story tells. Abraham certainly has countless descendants today, as promised, but there were also many other people around in Abraham's time who surely also would have many descendants by now. Hello, Michelle. Welcome back to the HBS and DWJ platform again. You are certainly welcome for the composing of this interesting and easy to read article replete with scripture and inspiring in images. Thank you for your comments. I couldn't agree more. Continue to be blessed, my friend. All right, let's move on to Alice. Alice says, this blog post provides an interesting analysis of the passage in Genesis where God promises land to Abram. The author highlights the significance of Lot's departure and Abram's obedience to God's command to lift his eyes and look in every direction. The promise of land to Abram and his descendants is emphasized, particularly the phrase, to your seed forever. The author also draws parallels between Lot's decision to claim land and Abram's obedience 
response to God's instruction. Overall, this post offers a thoughtful interpretation of the passage and highlights the themes of trust and submission to God. All right, hello, Alice. Thanks for stopping by the HBS and DWJ website turn podcast to comment on God appears to Abraham reaffirmed promise. Please feel free to continue to stop by and share your thoughts on other information on this HBS and DWJ website anytime. Your perspective is definitely welcome. Your opinion on this topic is very much appreciated and blessings to you, my friend. All right, let's move on to Les. Les says, thank you for sharing this detailed and insightful breakdown of Genesis chapter 13 verses 14 through 18. Your commentary delves into the significance of God's appearance to Abraham, his reaffirmation of their promise, and the symbolism behind Abram's actions. It's fascinating to see the parallels between Lot's choices and Abram's response to God's instructions. The promise of numerous descendants and the comparison of d- to dust as an analogy emphasizes the magnitude of God's covenant. Abram's obedient response, including his journey through the land and the act of building an altar, showcases his faith and trust in God's word. Your commentary provides valuable insights into the spiritual and historical context of these verses. Less. All right, hello, Les. Welcome to the HBS and DWJ platform. Thank you for your for appreciating this information as well as your comments on the subject at hand. I absolutely agree with you. Praise be to God for his indescribable gift in Jesus Christ. Blessings, Les. All right, let's move on to Skamalka. Skamalka says, I find this article about God's appearance to Abraham and the reaffirmation of his promise quite intriguing. I'm not very familiar with religious texts, but the concept of God appearing to individuals and making promises is fascinating. In this passage, it seems like God has given Abraham a land and descendants and there's a lot of symbolism involved, like lifting eyes and comparison of descendants to dust. What strikes me is Abram's res- Abraham's response. He removes his tent and builds an altar. Could you explain the significance of building an altar? Hmm. Is it a common practice during that time? And what does it symbolize in this context? Hmm. Also, the description of the landscape and locations adds an interesting layer to the story. Also, how do these locations contribute to the overall messages or message of meaning of the passage? Hmm. All right. Well, hello, Skamalka. Welcome back to the HBS and DWJ website turn podcast episodes. An altar symbolizes holiness and represents the presence of God, a higher place where untarnished, spotless, blameless services are offered to God. All right, Abraham left Haran and came to Canaan at the call of God. All right, now when Abram came to Canaan, he traveled through the land according to Genesis chapter 12, verse 6. All right. Okay. In Shechem, God promised Abraham, to your offspring, I will give this land. According to Genesis chapter 12, verse 7. All right. Now, the descendants of Abraham would be the heirs of what God had promised to him, but the promise was made to Abraham. He would receive the land. All right. I hope this helps. Thank you for your comments and questions, and continue to be blessed, my friend. All right, but for now, that's what God appears to Abraham reaffirmed promise is all about. With that being said, we will close out with prayer. O Holy Eternal Father, Son, Holy Spirit, your promise never. You promise never to grow weary. You have given us a vault of 
infinite riches as a resource on this side of life. You supply limitless power to the weak and you increase the strength of those who need it. Lift us up on the wings of eagles so that we can soar above our circumstances. We realize it is our responsibility to look to you in prayer and meditation on how to use the resources you have afforded us in the ways according to your will and not for our own selfish desires. Thank you for renewing our strength each day as we trust in you. Thank you for your continued graces and mercies. We pray these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, thank you all for tuning in. The United States, the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, Canada, Nigeria, the United Kingdom, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, Japan, Singapore, Greece, South Korea, South Africa, Australia, Ghana, France, Malaysia, Malta, Mexico, Nigeria, Spain, Asia, Bajan, Bangladesh, Belgium, Botswana, Brazil, Bulgaria, Colombia, Czechia, Dominican Republic, Finland, Germany, Grenada, Hong Kong, India, Indonesia, Ireland, Israel, Italy, Jamaica, Kenya, Kosovo, Lesotho, Liberia, Netherlands, New Zealand, Pakistan, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Romania, Singapore, South Korea, Sri Lanka, Qatar, Benin. Thank you all for your support. HBS and DWJ is eternally grateful. Please stay tuned for other discussions of the show. You can message HBS and DWJ at 704-412-8692. That's 704-412-8692. I would like to thank iHeartRadio for this opportunity. Thank you, iHeartRadio. You can find HBS and DWJ podcast most anywhere you receive your podcast. You can also find HBS and DWJ on our website at GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. That's GodInOurLivesEveryday.com. Or just hashtag HBS and DWJ. That's hashtag HBS and DWJ. Don't forget to check out the HBS store, HBS and DWJ store on God and Our Lives Every Day.com, and you can find us on Facebook at HBS and DWJ. All right, remember to put God first and everything else will follow. Appreciate your steps in life. They are the reason you can look back at where you came from. Why? Because to God goes the glory, the glory, glory.